Hello, I'm Daniel. In the amateur radio world, known as KE7UUM. Hope you enjoy the video. So today... <clears throat> TYT... TH9800. It is a quad band transceiver. And, um... Right off the bat... I am, one of the things I particularly not care for some of these radios, um, that even though this is quad band, being a technician class, um, my license doesn't allow me to transmit in the FM portion of um, 10 meters. Uh, so, um, basically it was because of the price and... It was a dual band cross. It also does um, 440, 70 centimeters, and it does cross band repeating. Um, also, just disclaimer, I did not purchase this radio. Um, <laughs> it's not even my radio, but it's going in a vehicle that I may be using, um, my dad's Jeep. So actually, I'm unboxing this and going to get it programmed. I got a programming cable, um, software already downloaded, but I got a programming cable from RT Systems. Um, this comes with a programming cable and software, but I have learned personal preference. I am not fond of the programming cable and software that come with some of these radios. Um, I've used a fair amount of them and I just, I don't care for them. That being said, let's take a look. Also, disclaimer, I have actually already opened this up once. So, as I said, it's a TH9800, 29 slash 50 slash 144 slash 430 megahertz quad band transceiver. Um, VV, UV, VU, simultaneous receive Capabil capability, 50 watts, sorry, i am got to turn this this way, 50 watts of high transmit output power, 40 on UHF. So, um, and it also, I didn't notice this sooner, actually my son pointed us out, it says wideband AM receiving and FM receiving for 26 to 33. So, this will, uh, looks like it will receive um, even 11 meters on AM. Um, and yeah, see there, it says free software. Yeah, we'll kind of ignore that for now, right? It says free software. Um, and I've never used the one exactly for this radio, but I've used the one for my Luton. Um, didn't care for it. And I had another one, um, some other import type radio and I didn't care for the software of it either um, I don't know what else is there anything else in the box that so let's open it up all right um, the manual let's see this equipment has been tested and found to comply with the limits for a Class B digital device pursuit to Part 15 of FCC rules. Oh, hey. That's pretty cool. I'm going to grab a chair, I think. There seems to be a, a lot going on. And my back is... I've not been feeling too well lately. So, um, let's see here. This manual. It appears the whole thing front to back um, in English. Um, so, here on the back page, it's got a warranty card, customer's name, and um, model number, serial number. And I <laughs> I 
there's a programming cable and uh, the small disc that goes uh, that comes with it. Yes, I heard my son calling me. Um, he didn't sound like he was in distress, so he's gonna have to wait. Um, let's see. This must be for the base to the head. It looks like it was, um, I think I remember seeing somewhere on here that it, that it separates. Um, whoa, there's the cap that's normally on the SO23. Yeah. Um, anyways, I'm I apologize. I apologize for not being a camera view. I'm trying to if I go out of it. Um, standard plug. Something else I've noticed on some of these import radios. Um, this plug looks the same as a Yesu or some of the other ones. But um, I bought one from Amazon quite a few years ago. And the positive and negative were on the um, opposite pins. So what that means is if you use a power wire that's already got one of these plugs on it, which it'll be going to Anderson's soon, but um, if you've already got one that's connected to a battery and uh, it's actually got a reverse um, polarity on the pins, uh, you're going to plug it in backwards and blow it. Okay, so let's see. Um, it says up at the top, DC 13.8 volts up there and external speaker and then data and up the cables there um there's the uh where the microphone plugs into it So good right there. Um, that's heavy. That um, that's as heavy as my um, <laughs> as my uh, eighty eight hundreds I've had have been. Microphone. Uh, man, we got a lot going on on this microphone. There's the PTT button. Up and down button. And let's see. Oh, lamp and then lock. Yeah, there's a there's a fair amount going on with that. It feels pretty good though. The bracket. This must. Uh, I bet you this is the mount if you're going to separate the head from the rest of the body. That's um. I'm guessing without actually, you know, I haven't gone through all the stuff yet. Uh, at least this one's got decent heavy duty wire. Um, I'm the same radio I was talking about a little bit ago. Um, I bought one um, that uh, 50 watt radio and it only had like 14 gauge wire on it. I wasn't overly impressed. Um, hardware to mount some of the stuff, extra fuses. Um, the uh, screws for the mounting bracket and a uh, microphone holder with some screws. Nothing else in the box. So, let's see here. Um, well, on this page, it's just kind of flipped through here. So, uh, on low power, it says 5 watts, medium power is 10 watts, or medium 2 is 10, medium 1 is 20. Now, that's weird. Medium 2 is 10 watts, medium 1 is 20 watts, um, and it goes low, medium 2, medium 1, and then high. That's very interesting. Um, 50 watts on high power. I don't know if you can see that. 40 50 for VHF, it says, um, and then 40 for UHF. Actually, it's 50 watts for everything except for UHF, apparently. Mm. Well, all right, folks. 
I'm going to read this up on this manual and uh, find out where, uh, <laughs> see where my dad's going to actually want to mount this in his Jeep at. And um, yeah, I look forward to uh, talking on it for the first time and using it. Once again, this was the TYT TH-9800 quad band transceiver. Um, Quan Show. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, let's see here. Quan Show. Quan Zo. Who the heck knows? TYT Electronics. Um, all right, folks. Have a great day.